Now, why do we uh, talk about uh, doing takeoff calculations and landing calculations? And um, Boeing did a study not too long ago, in fact it ended in uh, 2006, I believe, uh, of uh, Part 121 aircraft. The same uh, numbers could certainly be applied to 135 and so on. But um, uh, most accidents, 25% of the accidents, occur during the takeoff phase up to the point of flap retraction, and 45% occur in the landing, which is of no surprise. But what's interesting to note are the percentages at the bottom of the chart there that reflect the, uh, the percentage of accidents occurring as a basis of flight time. And clearly, 65% of all accidents occur during the first and last 2% of flight time. So this is why it's so important to do uh, takeoff as well as landing calculations. Now why use this net takeoff flight path analysis that we keep mentioning? Uh, and this is in, in, uh, uh, in lieu of using all these other uh, rules of thumbs and, and workarounds and, and uh, the, the myths or fallacies that we discussed previously. Well, first of all, the, the net takeoff flight path allows you to distinguish between SIDs, which are based on all engines operating, and an obstacle clearance or a single obstacle or single known obstacle clearance. The SID construction, is, uh, as I just stated, does not in itself assure regulatory obstacle clearance. Um, so you, you, you have to uh, modify, if you will, the SID to allow you to comply with the, uh, the 135 requirements of clearing the obstacles on a 35-foot net path. Um, but you also want to remove the safety margins, margins that are built into the SIDs because your net uh, takeoff paths will uh, basically add those margins back in. We can look at this uh, a little bit further uh, in just a moment, but also that the uh, net takeoff flight path calculates a max weight limit by segment. Again, the second segment is not always the most limiting. The final segment uh, uh, much more commonly than pilots would uh, expect is uh, the most limiting factor. We calculate a, a transition altitude, and this is a kind of a key uh, point to look for if your calculator or method is not actually giving you a transition altitude in NSL that probably is not actually doing a net takeoff flight path analysis. So that's uh, important to have. Incorporates this transition segment Again, the transition segment needs to be analyzed to determine whether or not you're staying above the climb gradient requirement throughout the entire uh, departure. And you also need to keep in mind that the, there are engine time limits on, them, uh, on aircraft engines, and you must maintain uh, the, the takeoff profile within that five or 10 minute limitation. But again, as we stated before, the uh, the net takeoff flight path is a requirement of both the AFM and the FARs. So we'll go back and start these one at a time.